to uh, accept the minutes. So moved. All right. I guess we'll second that. And we don't have any further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. One thing down. We'll see Henry next. We looks like you're up, Mr. Arlo. This is concerning. Oh, the quotes are in there. Not so are we making a decision now, or are we just? Do you have I, I, a, I mean, he's gonna give you a recommendation. Yeah, so you got a recommendation. Um, the the first page is what he asked what for for right. text, and then the minutes there. he can maybe give you a summary of the, so the way he came about what he decided. <laughs> yeah, it looked perfect for me. <laughs> This is all really just the, the bed, is that? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Prep of the frame, and uh, they're going to sand, yeah. sandblast the. Basically, the only thing they're not going to sandblast is what's underneath the cab. <clears throat> and so. mechanically, you're comfortable that this truck is good for. Yeah. Yeah, I took it over and had Adam look at it, Twin yeah. State, and yeah. he kind of went through it. Yeah, I mean. So it's more the dump bed that's shot than yeah. anything else. Yeah, the dump bed and then the the um, you know the hydraulic lines. Yeah. The steel lines are you know they're, this is before they started putting stainless steel on. Yeah. So they went from about that big to about that big. Yeah. So they're. Beefy. Yeah. yeah they're. Uh, You're gonna put stainless steel on. Right? Yeah, they're gonna put stainless steel on this. Yeah, the new one. And. Uh, yeah, he looked it over and he thought definitely uh, it was worth putting some money into it. So. Um, and did you, is this all he would put into it or would he, I mean, did he have any, rec should, it, should it be? Well, there, there's, a f there's a few other things. There, there's um, 40,000 is what was allowed. Right. And that's, um, 32. 30, yeah. And um, there's a couple other things. It needs it needs one new fuel tank. It's pretty yeah. pretty tender with new straps. But if we're gonna put one on, I'll probably just put two on because yeah. it'll probably be about this, you know maybe a little bit more for both of them. Yeah. And I actually talked to State Line, which is the our Max service people, and um, talked to them about putting air conditioning in it. Just so it just doesn't have it. It doesn't. That was the truck that it had it from factory and it got taken out. Yeah. So the <laughs> so the guts are there or not? Um, the the most important part is the the piping the is there. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it needs the pump Brackets and for yeah, the pump condenser and, yeah. and and I think that was like thirty five hundred dollars. Kind of a requirement now because of the MCHA stuff. Just if you don't have air conditioning, it's okay, but you there's dust tests and yeah. yeah. So what's the what was the MSHA? The MSHAs are mine safety oh, for, for the pit. Okay. Oh, gotcha. So gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Usually when they, <clears throat> I've only actually seen them do it once, but they show up with it. It's a little box and you wear it right about there and and uh, see what it. It tells you how much dust you're bringing in. How much dust you're swallowing. Right. Well. Nice. Hmm. Plus, it'd just be a little bit of operator comfort, too. It's, it's a lot of that, I guess. <laughs> I mean, things like an oven. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> so. And that, that air conditioning, I mean, that was a, you, you know, I guess it wasn't a necessary thing. It was just this. We did have enough money left. It was yeah. kind of priced it just to just to see, and it looks like we're probably going to have 
have enough left. And that one, that one would be done through the people putting the body on. That would be done right through Mac. Right. So. Plus, it would probably make the truck a little bit more desirable when we go to get rid of that, <laughs> that air conditioning. Sure. Sure. And this truck is a full 10 years old at this point, or not? Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, do you, just 10. By doing this, do you what would you anticipate? 10 more? Or probably I, no, not I was, six, six I, I more? Was, yeah, five, yet. six. Yeah. yeah. I kind of ran the numbers and, and figured out what we paid for the truck. Or actually, I think I figured out what we're paying for a new truck nowadays. And I broke it up in 10 years, so it costs per year what yeah. it's costing us. Yeah. And putting that 40000 in it was and keeping it for five years, cost still, per still year was way lower for that five yeah. years than the first 10. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I figured if it was that mm -hmm. much lower, it would, you know. What kind of mileage does it have on it? Uh, like, uh, 90,000, I think, which isn't a huge amount for a. Yeah, for our municipal truck. No, you know what I mean. All right. The, the biggest reason for keeping it is the, the new trucks with the emissions. You know, I mean, that truck's running through a snowstorm and never having any troubles, and the new ones are, not that they're a ton of trouble, but, you know, you have to stop and burn the thing off, and the the 08 has been a nightmare. I mean, we've had to put injectors in that, and it's just been... That's the, a Mac, or is that the yeah. Western Star? No, no Western Mac. Star is like a 12, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, that, the Western side has been good, and, they, and this Mac has been good, and one, one of the other Macs has been good, but it was one of them years where it was, um, early in the yeah, it was early in the emissions, and it didn't have yeah. some of the stuff, and, right. and it's just been, it's, it's kind of what I'm it's just been we, we, we pay for their yeah. research, yeah. learning, yeah. 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 So you're recommending biking? Biking, biking is, is the, yeah, that's the, and that's the cheapest one of them. Yeah. Um, and the AC is going to be about, call it four grand. For, yeah. Which, and we put a lot of 40 for. Yeah. I guess the biggest reason for biking, we've been pretty, you know, we've stayed with Fairfields for an Everest for quite a while. And uh, I guess the only reason really for going with biking is, I guess some of it would be maybe to keep Fairfield honest. Mm -hmm. Not that they're not being honest, but right. you know, when you go for it with them for 20 years straight, yeah. you're bound to say, hey, Putney's going with us. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Maybe no. we'll add a little lecture yeah. on that. Yeah. Cause no. they're gonna, so. Although I have to say, I mean, these prices are all very competitive. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So. Um, and you like the Viking body as much as? Yeah, the. the does, it, does it matter? The fair, the Fairfields and the, the Everest body and the Viking body are like very similar. Similar. They're very very similar. The the other one that's there from Osgoods that has what they it doesn't the other two have a false side which means when you raise the side dump up. You can't see through the side of the truck. It has a false wall there, and the other one doesn't, which to me means it's the ones with the false wall there. It's more structural, you know. If the other one just kind of has a frame there, and when the when the side dump comes back down, that's what makes it look like the side of the dump body. Right. So, huh. plus a couple towns around us have um, tried them and not had very good luck. And Viking has good reputation. Yeah, Viking is good. Westminster just uh, sent a truck out, and that's who they went with. So, where's Harrisville? Westminster. Oh, the, the, the Viking. Oh, where's Harrisville? Oh, oh, oh Harrisville, New York. Yeah. New York. Yeah. Where's, oh, no, where's Viking? The, the, um, that's, that's actually just, in. That's um, just a corporate head. Yeah, yeah. It's in. Um, oh, God. Uh, Williston. Williston? Yep. Yeah, yeah, Williston. Yeah, which is yep. virtually the same distance as going to Fairfield. to Fairfield from Morrisville. Yeah. 
the 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 um the Viking salesman also did tell us the one the one problem I did have with changing was we have a chain a feed chain sitting right on the floor at the shop so if we have one go bad we have it right in stock and he actually told me that if that was a selling point that he would put one on the floor at our garage for just to let us keep it there if we needed it so. Sounds good. That's a little okay. sweetener. That was pretty decent on yeah. so. I didn't hear what you said at all. What did you say? That, that, they, would, uh, that, that they would provide a feed chain if necessary. They would put it, put it right on the floor at, at the shop, so when it was needed, we could just use it. Okay. So, so do you need a motion on this? Yes. Um, so I'll make a motion that we accept Brian's recommendation to go with Viking. Sides um, for the refurb of the uh, which Mac is it? Number five. Number five two. Mac. I'll second that. Yeah. All right. Uh, if there's uh, no further discussion, uh, questions? Anybody? Any questions? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's a rebuilt Mac. A new bed. <laughs> when is this going to be done? Uh, probably in August. Do you want to go through the leaf blower thing quicker? Sure. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, yeah. Okay. Are you in a hurry? Not at all. Not at all. We're, we're gonna we're gonna rush no. this all through anyway. So, and you're you're the only you're the next you're the next up. So. <laughs> Maybe he's going to come to the school. Are you going to come and see the concert? Oh, of course. I always make sure I want to. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Got to be careful what you're saying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <TV>. <laughs> I, I, I was doing that when you were on a bicycle. I'm sure. <laughs> I think the, the discussion about the leaf back is going to be quick. It's more just kind of letting you guys know what our thought process with it is. You just don't use it enough. Yeah. Something. Does it have much value? <clears throat> yeah. Fair amount. Yeah. Uh, I kind of presented to them as ten grand. They came down and looked at it. Who's they? Um, Pittsburgh, town of Pittsburgh. Oh. <clears throat> they came down and looked at it um, yesterday. Yesterday. So. I, I think part of it for me is that when I brought this up a while ago when we sold something that we were going to sell the, the lawnmower or something. Right. I, we really don't have a policy for what how we sell our equipment. Yeah. So this was kind of a, Brian had been thinking about it. They were interested. We didn't put it out right. you know, for anybody advertise to, we didn't it. advertise yeah. it. We don't really have a policy to do that. And that's one of the things that I guess we should probably look at, but we have this opportunity possibly. So I just wanted to make sure you guys knew what was going on. Um, they didn't come back with anything yet. Not yet. No. They, they had a slug for me. But they didn't and totally balk at that price. No, no. So he did say that you know there was the the tube that comes off that actually does the vacuum. Pick up. That, yeah. That was you know it's kind of dry rotted. And he said that that was a thousand dollars and so. They might. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean the thing's got a hundred and fifteen hours on it no and kidding. we've had no. it for ten years. <laughs> So, <laughs> so that shows it's, 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 it's your own motor. I don't even yeah. know how it's set up. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's own motor, tow behind, and then we put that leaf box on the right. truck. Well, it's a pretty good piece of equipment. I mean, I think it was just more appropriate to you know kind of pave streets. Yeah, you know, collect this dryer leaf instead of, dry leaves, instead of just everything out of yeah. the out of the ditch. It was a little not quite to be duty enough for that. So the question I have, is it okay if Brian and I work on it? And we will come up with some... So you don't right now have a price for we a replacement? You got a general uh, sense of... Yeah, he does, well, he does kind of have an email. Okay, very good. For, if you don't want to go through it now. What's that for? No, we want to, because I want what your what your plan is. Once you get... Oh, yeah. If we get rid of that, what's the next? Um, both the town of Dummerston and the town of Guilford have... Well, the town of Dummerston didn't have a vacuum, but the town of Guilford did have a vacuum. Same thing as ours. They replaced it with a blower. That's what I've seen Darston using. And Darston replaced, 
or the Thomerson got a blower as well. Yeah. And uh, both of them are just like, it's the best thing since sliced bread. I <laughs> wondered actually what, what, I, what I was, I've been over work on Miller yeah. Road and they went by and I thought, yeah. I wonder why we don't do that. Yeah. Right, we're I trying mean, to back it. Whoa. It cleans the ditches, it blows everything, everything yeah. off the road. But right. so you do have to be kind of careful, careful with it the around people's houses. Dogs, right? you don't, you know, if somebody gets just gets under a can you probably don't want to fill it full of leaves. So. Then you just blow it off there while yeah. you them out. Yeah. yeah. That's one way to get the sand off the street. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and what kind of money is that? That's the same, from the same range. No, less. Like fifty five hundred dollars. Yeah. For another yeah. one. Yeah. 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 That's brand new. And that's yeah. I think that's what Emerson paid for theirs was fifty five hundred, I believe. What is that mount on? Is it mount on a uh, just a three point hitch with a oh, it's not tractor. Mm, yeah. Which yeah. my thought was we'd probably run it right on the top right on the front of our sidewalk machine. Uh, oh. That thing's kind of that time of year is kind of not getting used for anything, so we probably And just it has the horsepower for it. Oh yeah. And yeah. So would you then go out on the roads with that? Yeah, or? yeah. Uh. just drive up and back and the road should be gone, you know, the yeah. road should be all gone. So. Makes sense. We could, the other option would be to put it on the back oh, of our tractor, our tractor yeah. but that thing's bigger, bulkier, yeah. you know, passing cars is a little bit yeah. trickier with that, so. Oh, the sidewalk tractor sounds like a good idea. Yeah. That thing actually has more, the, the sidewalk tractor actually has more horsepower than the tractor does. Does it really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, wow. it's like 118 horse. Is it really? Yeah. Huh. My breath's getting it stuck. Yeah. yeah. It's going to push through those glaciers. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Sounds, Sounds good. We're all okay with that yeah. plan that we've, well, we've come up with. And, okay. Good. Sounds good. Thank you. There's a concert at school. Yeah, that's what I did. That's right. So yeah. yeah. Is it yeah. relevant for me to know what time that starts? No. Six. 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 six the for younger right. kids are at six, the older kids are at seven. Good, Good evening. Good evening. Hey. Um, so I spoke to Cynthia about a request to come before the board as the town's animal control officer to uh, make a request and to give you some information. The request, well the information is, I don't know, uh, cheer side reading or whatever, but uh, I've put together a packet for each of you um, and one for Cynthia, uh, where we're taking notes or minutes. Um, it's basically uh, a compilation of information that uh, deals with a wide variety of, uh, of dog and dog bite specific uh, issues. Uh, on the left hand side is the big book of woof. Um, this is generated by attorney Garrett Baxter from Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns who I have heard uh, present uh, on three recent occasions uh, at Vermont League of City and Towns trainings and he also appeared recently at uh, the Vermont Animal Control Association's uh, session. Uh, but that is a response from League of Cities and Towns as to problems towns not unlike ours have with a whole variety of dog issues. Uh, on the right hand side of your packet, uh, the yellow pack, and I color coded these just so when I'm talking about one or the other, uh, the yellow packet is a extract of chapter three from the big book of Wolf. Basically what I did is I took chapter three out, uh, separated it, because it deals with the legislative mandates that tell the town what they have to do, when and why they have to do it, et cetera, in response to uh, a dog bite complaint filed with the town. And the trainings and information that I've gathered and what you'll find or derive from your look if you uh, go there is that the timelines associated with this in the statute are a bit of a pinch. Um, 
a, a dog who bites a citizen or a person off the property of the owner of the dog. In other words, I'm sorry, off the premises. And the language is very specific because my dog in the back of my pickup uh, is different than my dog off my lawn at my home. Uh, but the statute specifically says premises and it goes into defining what premises is, etc., etc. Um, so within seven days of the receipt of a complaint, uh, the select board has to conduct a hearing. Uh, has to have a quasi-judicial hearing uh, during which they collect evidence and proceed uh, with either a protective order after making a finding, et cetera, et cetera. Um, at first, I wasn't as concerned about this because the statistics seem to bear true that 70% of all dog bites occur on the property of the owner of the dog, but we're still talking about a 30% that happens at the neighbors, at the downtown area, in a public place, at the at the in the parking uh, lot. Sure, sure. sure. Yeah, they, they um, and this year, knock on wood, uh, I have not had a lot of dog bite complaints. Last year, I seem to have gotten quite a lot. I would say I probably had eight or ten in the course of the year. Different dogs? Different dogs, different owners, different victims, different situations, um, mostly reported by the emergency room at the hospital. The emergency room has been very good in complying with mandates that they notify uh, both the town health officer, who has the primary oversight responsibility, and in Putney's case, the ACO, because I've harped at him and harped at him and harped at him and saying I can't do anything about it if I don't know about it or telling me about it six days later doesn't do much good in trying to investigate these things. Then along comes Title 20, 45, 36, which says within seven days of the receipt of a complaint, the select board shall have a hearing. Um, so what I've done is, from the trainings that I've been to and from the information that I've gathered from Vermont leagues of cities and towns, I have put together four other color-coded packets. The first blue packet um, is what the complaint uh, needs to address if, if the victim of a bite wishes to file a complaint. It has to address four items. Uh, that it occurred off the property, that it required medical attention, that it was unprovoked. Um, and, and so what I took the liberty of doing, the white page that's the second page uh, in the packet is what Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns drafted in their appendix as a recommendation. I then took that recommendation and converted it into the first page so that the first page is applicable to the town of Putney, what Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns says would benefit us in accepting a complaint. The second is the response to the complaint in the same format, the blue being what I'm proposing uh, that the town adopt as its procedures, if you will, uh, that, then the white is the recommendation. Um, one of the, and I, I rode to and from uh, the, here, the most recent training with Dick Clark from Guilford, from the select board in Guilford, and he has done three of these hearings since January of this year. Um, one of them on an emergency basis where they actually had to go out in kind of an immediate situation and round up a dog that had viciously attacked someone. And uh, so I've heard some relevant nearby stories of concern, but they have executed three of these hearings since the first of the year, um, making protective orders or findings as a result of them. And he says the biggest challenge is uh, the uh, posting notices because of the seven-day requirement. Um, you know, posting that there's going to be a public hearing, uh, but meeting the is it open meeting or public meeting laws or standards or regulations? Um, so without boring you further, the, the blue forms are basically forms that they recommend using in the process 
the pink um, is described as the town's version of the rules of civil procedure or whatever. In other words, this is a local based this is what we recognize the statute says, and this is the procedure that we will follow. Now, I have no clue where this has to go or whose hands this has to go through or who has to wave blessing wands over it and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I assume town attorneys or somebody at some point might want to jump on board and say yes, no, yay, nay, whatever. I I'm just proffering to you information that I have gathered that I think the select board would benefit from having knowledge of. Um, so the pink packet is, uh, is again the draft of the Vermont League of Cities and Towns model uh, in the white format and then the pink format is just converted uh, to language specific to Putney. In other words, in theirs it says the town of blank and I have gone through and put in the town of Putney or put it on stationary relevant to us, et cetera, et cetera. And then the last is the green form, and the green form uh, basically is what comes out of the hearing process. Once a hearing has been held, we find this, that, or the next thing, and we recommend this, that, or the next action. Um, now, I have not done justice to the explanation of the statutory requirements of all of this. That's why I've given it to you in printed form so that you can scan through it, peruse it, read it, digest it, whatever has to happen. But um, I'm just fearful that the potential seems likely that we, we as the town are going to be confronted with this kind of a situation at some point in the future. And I'm just trying to offer some guidance to, to help us move in that direction. It, so if you, so, so let's say the hospital calls Tom because they have a, a then apparently you and Tom somehow connect locally. When, when do they, do, when does somebody do this? Is that, because they have to do this in order to start the process. Correct. So we, uh, my position as your animal control officer has been not to take a position on Whether they the exchange of information with them. If they ask me, I will search, you know, what are my options? What, what do I do? Where do I turn? Right. How do I get help? I will then tell them about this, but I'm not going to take a position and line up victims right. out into okay. the street uh, to ask for hearings. But if someone wants to know what my options are or has a difficult time, the trainer from Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns told us that there is no statute of limitations where this runs out. The, the legislature, the, the statute was enacted, don't quote me, I believe 2009, 2010 mm -hmm. legislative session, so it's been around a little bit. Um, but people can go back and say, you know what? I'm really frustrated that a year ago this happened. It's up to the, the burden is on them to bring forth the information, but. I, but right I, now, I wouldn't even if I right. had somebody call me and say, you know, what do I do? I, I, yeah, I, I mean, the tool. I mean, I would call you. And that was yeah. kind of the thinking behind yeah. it was if they did uh, this pink packet, mm -hmm. which is the procedures, uh, could be given to them. Right and or the blue one which says if if you wish to file a complaint the select board will then act upon it um, there has to be notices notices to the owner of the dog there has to be an investigation to establish was the bite was the bite provoked or unprovoked if if uh, i walk onto steve's property and kick his dog and his dog chases me off the property and bites me mm -hmm and there's a finding that I provoked the situation, then the town is not under an obligation to make a protection order because it was a provoked bite. Right. So that's one of the elements that, that they look at. But my thought, if you asked me, would be give them the procedure for a vicious dog hearing and give them a blank complaint and say, if you wish to follow through, these are steps you may wish to take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only the only exception I could see where you will, or somebody might want to 
insert themselves a little more aggressively as if it seemed like a situation where there was some sort of a victim, you know, I, I mean, I, I, runs into the yard. Or, or, the or an intimidating guys. neighbor and somebody who says, right. you know, boy, I, you know, I never want to do anything because of this. And, you know, that might be a time to sort of step in and right. say, and I, I think you're right. I think it's great if people would do this on their own, but I also think there might be occasions where right. they and might need not, you know, hey, that dog really is a problem. You, and you know, I the think the town to envisioned that possibility um, quite a number of years ago with the animal control ordinance. Yeah. We received some accolades uh, at the training in Montpelier when I got up and blew the town's whistle for having an animal advisory board mm. because many times uh, victims of dog situations, nuisance dogs, whatever, uh, want to be heard. They want right. their voice heard. <laughs> right. And they don't necessarily want a pound of flesh or six shillings. They want, uh, you know, they want to be heard and know that somebody is aware of the situation and is choosing to respond to it. So by us putting into the town ordinance an option that they could utilize the animal advisory board that the town has where they could go and get some relief and then if they don't like the options or suggestions or they're not satisfied with it but I did hear what you were saying and yes concern about reprisal or retaliation or continuation of offense yeah. if I have a if I have a dog living in a in an area where risk is great next to the school and the dog is always showing up on the playground at the school and somebody better do something that's the one where a more swift intervention, yeah. you know, needs action, yeah. I think. No, I think that would be unusual. You know, I mean, it's interesting just the fact that, you know, I've been here for nine years and we've never had a dog incident, incident per, per se. I mean, we've had plenty of dog <laughs> incidents, right. but we've never had a dog here. Um, right. You know, yeah. is that just coincidence or is it because well, I think we have the newness? Had this? I think okay, it's the newness. What, yeah. This legislation is, is very new. I heard about it a year ago uh, in May in Montpelier when the Vermont League of Cities and Towns did their first presentation of the Big Book of Woof mm -hmm. and brought all the ACOs and representatives from various towns or whatnot. And by the way, I, I would like to thank the town for A, allowing me to go and B, reimbursing me for mileage to, to make the trip or whatnot. It, it just made a lot better the, the ability so to go and thank you. We're thrilled to do it. Thank you for pursuing this. I mean, you are, we are the luckiest clearer. town in this county to have you as our animal well, control well, officer. So, thank you. Yeah, uh, I've been in a lot of towns where they struggle with this all the time, and you do a yeah. full time job plus you do this for us. So, so I put my card with my contact information inside the front cover. I invite you to call me. Um, the big book of woof. Uh, from which the yellow packet was extracted has a whole lot of other general stuff. It's the color-coded ones that I'm urging us as a town to look at and consider adopting yeah. uh, through whatever procedures have to happen. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll put it. Um, it probably I'll should have Larry, go. Oh, Larry. I'll have Richard. Richard look at yeah. it and um, then bring it up at a meeting for adoption for whatever procedures yeah. we have. I mean, given that it's generated by the LCT, was, chances right. are we're pretty safe. Yeah, but but I, just, I think it's never hurts to double check with council. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And uh, again, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Can I tag on another question? Just though, so, um, based on with the public safety committee, we we looked a little bit at animal control stuff. We were concerned with some other things beforehand, but one of the things that came up through the sheriff's department is <clears throat> that they're not necessarily equipped to deal with a, an out of control dog or something like that and how to handle it. And because you work full time and you know this isn't your full time job, you're probably not even always available. True. So the or, question- Or equipped. We don't or, or equipped, yeah, we didn't know that either. And so the question is, you know, what is, what is the procedure that the town uses now? And along with that, uh, from what we understand, there's someone in Brattleboro who has the whole sort of does this yeah. does this thing. I think the town hires that person, but we're and we haven't been able to check yet. But we're wondering if that person isn't working full time, can they kind of be on retainer almost with Putney? Well, let me share some. Like that. We don't. You know, those are questions. We don't yeah. Let me share some yeah. general information mm -hmm. with you. Um, the animal control officer's position, the municipal position within the town of Brattleboro, 
I'm told, is currently open. Um, it is unfilled and open. Um, beyond that, I don't know where negotiations on the position are at or what's happening, um, but I, I am told that the uh, employee who had served as their animal control officer for quite a number of years uh, is not in the position. Um, I believe there's some chance that they may be returning to the position, but I don't know. I just know it's vacant. I see. Okay. Now, they had a professional relationship with the Wyndham County Humane Society because the municipal animal enforcement person was in the same municipal jurisdiction as the County Humane Society. Right. Um, and so they had a, a close personal relationship uh, and would certainly assist back and forth. Now, the Humane Society has a humane investigator uh, within their agency. Um, I know her first name is Jennifer, and I'm embarrassed that I don't recall her last name. But um, utilization of that is not something that's currently promoted by the Humane Society as a service to contracted towns or whatever. Our limited contract with the Humane Society is for a stray, non-vicious dog picked up, taken to them, which I've done two in the last week, by the way, but another aside. Um, so you, when you have a bite situation, a potentially dangerous situation, a threatening, menacing dog or whatnot, it's, uh, it's the Wyndham County Sheriff's Department, or myself, or Tom Goddard. Tom has fielded a few of these head on himself uh, as best we can without, I mean, I've borrowed traps from uh, the Humane Society to trap a stray cat. I think I enamored myself with a few of the employees at the town hall because the poor gray cat was creating a traffic hazard dodging cars for a long time. It was just referred to as the gray cat. Well, within two hours I had the gray cat in the trap and headed to the Humane Society, but that's the kind of catch as catch can or haphazard of response to it. Right. If you said my son got bit or my daughter got bit and I need somebody to come right now, I can't yeah. guarantee you that yeah. you know the ordinance says the state police, the county sheriff's or the appointed animal control officer can respond to you, but it's can, you know, uh, so. And Keith has certainly expressed an interest in, in, in sort of having somebody that's doing that. I don't know whether they've come any further on that or not. I, I know, know they that haven't. It was no, sort of yes. two or three years ago they were saying, yeah. yes, we yeah. want to I do this. I think there was but some talk, there just wasn't a lot of interest by the towns and it now to, really to, kind of to yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be reserving the extent of my comments, but the Santa's Land situation yeah. um, has demonstrated the struggling ability of agencies jointly. To, uh, to I mean this up to my ears. Yeah. The, yeah. Humane, or the Humane Society is calling me literally daily now because of concerns that Melissa's on vacation and the compliance checks ordered by the court are, you know, are questionable. The relationship between me and management there is not good. Um, but I think that whole situation and the progression of that uh, has opened Sheriff Clark's eyes and certainly my eyes about committing to the management of large scale situations. Yeah. Which, which we've had, I mean, Chad Bark Hill a few years ago, and then there was, or not even a few years ago, you know, I mean, the, it seems like every couple of years we have a fairly large right. scale thing. To me, I, yeah, I guess well, we're not. Just look at all the response in here about hybrid dogs. Yeah. You know, the hybrid, wolf hybrid, which yeah. you hardly see anymore. Right. You know, it was a popular. That came out period with the fatalities in town. Right. Right. Townsend. 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 Yeah, I remember yeah. that. And issues of that, and there was a response, but, you know, now. Now we don't so have that. We're doing the best we can uh, in moving yeah. forward with these situations. They are emotional situations and challenging situations. Um, you know, telling a lady that 35 cats in her house may be a few too many is, is heart-wrenching, but it's a challenge that we try to meet and try to work our way through. Um, you know, in an ideal world, there would be a, either a division of the Sheriff's Department that could do globally, right. you know, mm -hmm. something for towns under contract. I don't know, maybe. I mean, maybe it goes every time. It's like a little, you know, there could be a little more leadership at the state level. So, you know. Right. Unfunded mandate. Yeah, exactly. He has the tools to deal, deal with, with this. this but, right.
Well, uh, just I, to give an example, the last time that I, not, this isn't the only dog bite we, we dealt with, but there was a dog bite, the owner actually quarantined the animal mm -hmm. on the property, but there was a point in that discussion where I was making a couple phone calls to local vets to see if there was anybody that was willing, if we needed it quarantined, mm -hmm. to take it. It just so mm -hmm. happened that, so it's kind of a, like you said, we just do the mess. best we can. It's a no man's land. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. I mean, but that one turned mm -hmm. into, you know, the neighbor was concerned because they were just chaining it to a tree. Nobody was walking it, you know, so then the neighbor kind of asked for permission to walk it. And so there's a lot mm -hmm. of things when one thing happens that there's a lot of people trying to figure out what to do right. with that, that animal. Well, I think I speak on behalf of the whole board when I say that if, if you, anything you want or need as far as training and or probably some basic equipment, yeah. we're probably happy to okay. pay for it and supply. Well, the question would be tonight for you, would have been you. What, what tools can we give you to get? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I appreciate that and I appreciate knowing that, that you're aware of the situation and we'll help take a look at it. Thank you. So we'll bring this to another. I'll let you know when the meeting is. And if you, uh, if we, I think you need to come, or if you guys have questions in the meantime, then. Yeah, any questions at all? My work number, daytime, my home number, nights, evenings, and weekends. Call. You know, I'll answer any questions I can. Fortunately, our climate, for the most part, precludes things like, uh, you know, the viper, the the snakes, the uh, mm -hmm. the boas, and things mm -hmm. like. That. <laughs> right, well, more well, tropical like places. Florida. <laughs> Unlike Florida, right? Well, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, yeah. it, it absolutely is. Get it's insane that these things are. Get uh, climate change if you want. <laughs> Another piece of information for either Richard or uh, is that I have all of that work product on disk. So okay. please ask them not to regenerate. Not to tweak it. I'll just bit. give you. Yeah. I'll just okay. give you a disk with it all on it, and they can print or do or modify or change. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Time to get to the concert. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we still a little work to do. <laughs> we can miss you. So, Landmark College, they are in the process of trying to complete all of their massive permits process with all different agencies um, to start construction on their science and technology building. Um, they've gotten the local, they went before the DRB, they got their local permit, they're working with Tom on some issues with the, um, with his permitting, Act 250 they're working with. Um, one of the last things that they're working on is their water and sewer connection to the municipal um, system. They filled out an application to connect to the wastewater um, and to the water. There was a lot of back and forth. I can't remember which one it was I was talking to you about it. Um, there was a, I originally got a letter from them saying that the building itself needed an allocation of like 30, almost 4,000 gallons a day. So in looking at our ordinance, that would have been a huge connection fee because it would be considered a new connection That's for X amount of ERUs a day. So it took me about a week to say that number to them because I just wasn't really sure of myself as to if that's what, it was like a, it was like $59,000 was what it equated to by the time I got done with the calculation. So I went, um, I talked to Brent, he's the, um, the engineer at Otter Creek and explained to him where I was at with it and that I didn't, you know, I needed an application with what their increase in allocation would be. And he explained to me that they're not increasing their population. And I said, I don't, I don't know what that, I don't know what that means. Does that mean that the old building now, the population is moving to the other, what's the other building gonna be used for? So I was kind of looking at it on a global, what is the, what are the allocations to the whole campus? And you know, maybe you're building a new building, but you don't need 3,500 gallons a day, but you might need an extra 400, I don't know. So it came down to him having to call the state because the original letter I got um, was from the state of Vermont with that $4,000 per day number. So, 4, yeah. I mean 4,000, yeah. 
about the college. And he said, I just wanted to summarize my understanding. First, the college is not proposing any changes to the number of faculty or student population. With this in mind, it does not matter how many buildings there are on campus as the water and sewer use is going to be set by faculty and student population. To use your example, if you have three people living in a home with one bathroom, the design flows are gonna be the same in that home if three bathrooms are added. The people will only use the bathroom a set amount of time. So he went on to talk about that. So the state agreed with that. They agreed that you were not, in, you didn't need an increase in right. allocation because the population is going to stay the same. Right. You got to add a certain amount, a, a small nominal amount, just because you're filling up the pipes in effect. Well, they, they, like that. they didn't so, do that. They right. don't so they just. Yeah. I, I guess I, I wonder about that though, because if you're adding a bill, a science and technology building, mm -hmm. where you're ostensibly doing oh, I mean, it's, experiments yeah, right, right, and all right. that stuff. That's why I was sort of saying that, that at least a nominal increase in use would be right. But could it be a, a, a large increase? But it may be, but they may already be in a surplus situation to begin with. Oh, know, I see. Right, right, right as far as ERU right, right now. Well, I mean, and they, they are, there, it is a new building with, with that use, they but they do have hard. that use on the campus already. They do okay. have science and technology, so. The other, the other thing that I would imagine would counter that to a reasonable degree is that I'm guessing they're doing reasonably state of the art right. equipment cooling. for well, and also and for bathrooms. Right. You know, I mean, lower no flush toilets, so on and so forth. You know, right, right. I would assume. I don't yeah, know. Right. You know, so if you're taking a building that has ten bathrooms, mm -hmm. that you know, every time you flush a toilet, it takes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and now you're reduced. You know, I don't know, but yeah, that would be no. my assumption. I guess because when it came down, the other thought with this, and it's not like I'm trying to no, create a problem here. I'm just wondering about that. But also, I think of a science building, and I mean, how do you mitigate? I mean, as far as wastewater goes, you know, the stuff like the you know, right. barium goes down the sink, and you know, that's mm -hmm. got to go into the system. They, I they, imagine there's got to be something. That, I'll, I'll bet Otter Creek and or the state. I mean, I'll bet the S250 permit. They, they have to involved. go through all yeah. I mean, okay. I can ask those questions, though, just mm -hmm. so we know the answer, so we're not just yeah. assuming anything. And that's, you know, mm -hmm. it's a good question. And and they're already, you know, there are already classroom facilities where this work's being done. Although right now, and you know, right, yeah, yeah. and yeah. in right. fact, it may reduce the you know, right. they may have right. a heavy metal settling tank in right. the basement right. in the new one that they don't have in the old, right. you know, I have no idea, yeah, no, yeah, well, that's... I don't know if it's a plan, well, I mean, open, but um, so the application itself is just the application fee with no increase in allocation on either of them. So, what I sound like it. It's a lot of money in our account. $150. Oh, great. Compared to the $59,000 <laughs> I tried to give <laughs> I don't know if any of this, if any of you want to look at that. But, um, so what I need tonight is either I need a motion for the approval of these applications. Right. One of the things that I do want to mention is that my concern is is that how do we know when the population increases on that campus? If we don't catch some of it during a zoning application time or a pro or site plan mm -hmm. review, I don't know. So I'm going to have that discussion with them mm -hmm. and and, yeah, I think, yeah, and sit yeah, down yeah, and do a review with them of what they're being charged right now. I mean, it's a very logical thing for us to ask for. We've got a plan for you know fire and safety yeah. issues, things like that. Just knowing. It's just a you know simple exchange. Yeah, whether that means that we make an agreement to on a by you know every other year sit down with a review of what is the population. I don't know what they're mm -hmm. because I feel like maybe we're missing, or they may be being charged too much. I don't know, but I feel like we're missing something up there. And this should, is all part of that project of just reviewing the whole system. We but, should yeah exactly. We should have that discussion yeah. with them. This doesn't really show us anything. Now that. Um, so move. Yes. Oh, so yeah. move to accept the application. 
Yeah, I'll have those conversations with them. It looks like it's just a site plan. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. no, I was just curious where they're sticking the building on the site. That's what I was wondering, too. Right now. Every day as you drive in, by the, you know where the quad is. When yep. you drive yeah. in, there's the tennis courts. They're taking the tennis courts down. So it'll be like a, oh, you know, really? huh. be like, yeah. It'll be just as you drive in. Well, you know what's going to be from there. He skates on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, there'll yeah. be new services. <laughs> All right, it's Actually, been uh, the the moved and seconded to Squire uh, Landmark with the new Warren Stewart connections. All in favor? All right. All right. as to how the in situation is going to affect it. Mm. I mean, what are, what are we going to do? How many other users do we have over there? So what are we going to do? Well, we've got it right. We, we've, got to, we've got to fix it because we're still going to be pumping those businesses up. And ultimately, we're going to be, you know, money foolish here if we don't fix it because someday someone's going to... One would hope. Yeah, I know. No, I know. It's just infrastructure in, in place is only going to make it more appealing. You know? Well, the key is to this is talk landmark into buying what lived the end. Or go back to John and offer and talk him into it. They were looking at it at one point. But yeah, I mean, I guess that's the thing is how um, yeah, involved... Yeah, but I would say their finances, you know, were, you know, they were, they were running a, a tight... Well, you know, but part of that was the asking price. Sure. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. right well, what was it then? Say it was 1.2 or something, but yeah. total, I, I have no idea. Um, you know, we'd have to look at, you know, just, let's just simply say, give it a five year period and say, what's it going to cost us to continue to just pump things out? Yeah, no, I'm not, and I'm not, a do, you know, could come down to dollars, you know, yeah, versus what one way is going to cost us, and, just and, 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 and if we fix it. Yeah, where we are in that, just to update you, where we are in that process, the is we're still waiting for the state to approve the permit for us to just gain access to assess it. Isn't that amazing? Now, so, do we know this was a different situation? Oh, well, I would, they have, they I would be more aggressive. Yeah. I mean, if do we, we have were, a lien on the property for the for yes. backs? We, we, we are. Water and, for utilities? Yeah. Yes. yeah, there's an automatic lien because. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm, 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 I'm yeah. assume that. That's what, unfortunately, and I'm not that's sure the bankruptcy, I don't know, is the difference. Is I, ca I called the attorney about it, and he, about two weeks ago, and yeah. told, asked him if it was ended up in a bankruptcy situation, is there something legally I need to do right now right, to ensure, and he said, no, you're one of your first in one of the first in line. Mom's the first to get food. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. are we, I, I don't remember, I mean, we obviously, we sort of had this conversation with Randy back in November or whenever that was, but are, what are we currently charging her and should we be given that the inn is getting no usage? Well, I mean, she's only really being charged for the, the, um, the bond, the, okay. yeah, so her, I mean, her sewer bill is not, she, she's not, because she's not using it. Yeah, and right. so really right now what she's being charged for is okay. the bond, so. Yeah, no, I just, but, you know, I hate to see that, I hate to see her liability toward us continue to grow if it's yeah. not legitimate so um. yeah. I mean I, I have to say is but that that eighteen thousand dollar utility bill right now it is an obstacle and and I know we need the money but it is an obstacle and it's in when people start looking at that property it's like waha you know and and part of it is it's a payment that for something they're not using yet. <laughs> they, there, there's a lot of explaining you have to do, and I understand why it's there. She paid a lot of money towards that water bond mm -hmm. over the years. Which ultimately, yeah. potentially, she, is very valuable for yes, that property. Yes, it is very valuable, so, yeah. Uh, so, 
I'm just saying that that potentially could be something that comes before the board again. That is I mean, there. this very discussion that we were having about landmark is sort of apple. I mean, I think you came up with a. I don't know why are you just get this fifty nine thousand? You have that like stuck in your head, but. I think that was the number that you came up with for the inn if they were yeah. just connecting up fresh and new too. Yeah, it was quite, yeah, and maybe it was it's just coincidental that it's similar, but either that Yeah, or probably the ERUs were about you've the got same. Your idea. I, uh, Actually, or something that 59,000 59, was without them paying back on the bond, so it was like 72 <laughs> when okay. we first started. So, yeah, it's a, it, they're, Rather than expensive to run a yeah, system system. absolutely no, and, and I think that I think that you know just that people to know the value of that eighteen thousand in debt that's built on mm -hmm. it compared to what it would cost is. But when you're looking at an eight hundred and fifty thousand dollar price tag, eighteen thousand shouldn't be too much of a shocker, I wouldn't think. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it'll come back because once we get the assessment done. Then, then, then there's a major conversation about putting out a, an RFP for the actual work. Speaking of assessment, do you know what her tax assessment was? What the value? Yeah. Um, it dropped about five hundred thousand. To. It was, I think, one point five. It dropped down to about. To a better value. Yeah. Okay. Were, weren't there improvements done over there the too? They took those trees out and did something. They, they didn't, didn't ever really. Not much, no. There was some demolition done inside some of the place. Right. Yeah. But uh, the water guy, um, Joe. Yeah, mentioned that they had dug it or something. Yes. And that might they weren't sure if they hit something. They couldn't prove or just prove anything. Yeah, they had they wanted to have the electrical line below ground instead of hanging oh, over. Oh, I see. Okay. So they did that. Okay. They so just yeah, they did a lot of work over there. Not a lot of work that amounted to being able to reopen. Right. Right. A lot of, you know. Um, I, didn't, I don't have three of these, but I just wanted to, this that was sent here. It's an invitation, Putney Family Services is doing 20. If you want to just write that date down, if you can say if any of them would be pretty soon. going while you're signing those. Mm -hmm. um, I would like some direction on what we want to do um, with our discussions with Rescue Hack. Do we, do we want to just go with the contract they gave us? Do we want me to work with the lawyer with a new contract? Do we, I, I just, I'm not sure what it is that I should Oh, and the next meeting is the third Thursday of the month, and I think that someone their next meeting. yeah yes I think someone should go. Yeah. I don't know who that someone is. Third Thursday. Do we have a reference? What day? What day is what? Nineteenth. Nineteenth of Thursday June. Thursday. Yes. Yeah. Thursday. Um, what time well, is it? Well, Norm, do you want to touch base with Norm? I can. Yeah. <coughs> Norm Bartlett. And see what, because he expressed an interest <coughs> several months ago, and I think that um, it would be worth having a conversation with him about okay. it anyway. Um, um, if for some reason he's not, this month doesn't work out for him, or he's not interested, um, I do have someone else in mind that um, Lawrence will know about, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That he, I'm just thinking of making sure that. Whether this is a who's the rep is going to be, or that somebody, somebody right? I was going to say, I mean, if, if we don't, if we don't have somebody who's going right as a rep, just to be at the meeting, the I mean, other I'll, person I'll, who expressed I'll, an interest, I'll, I'll go, you know, okay. to, uh, yeah, we yeah, should yeah, have a rep. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. to this, and I think, uh, well, uh, well, I don't know, yes, no, 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 safety no, no, committee. Well, yeah, well, I'm, well I'm, that's what I'm, I'm going to try to figure out too. If it's something I can attend, both of you. Well, no, you can't. You can't sit next. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. You can um, only ride there in silence together. <laughs> I don't know exactly the time. I'll have to find out. Okay. I want to say that it's seven. Yeah, I feel I feel that we should uh, in that in a board meeting with them 
address, you know, some of those questions. Just yeah. Say, I, you know, I'd like a, I'd like some comment and feedback from them on that. Mm -hmm. Are we meeting again before then? Yes, we're meeting we are on the 18th. Meeting. So why don't we think about that a little yeah. bit? Because, yeah, I think one of... Okay, because I'm, you know, I'm yes. certainly willing to... I think a board member, one yeah. of us should mm -hmm. be there. Yeah. Um, and I think we should probably talk at our next meeting a little bit about exactly what we Well, we will feel. say to them. And, yeah. Because right. yeah. I made it clear after the vote, I spoke to um, Drew and Lou, who were there, mm -hmm. and said, you know, just so you know, from my perspective, this conversation is not over yet. You know, I mean, right. I, I said, you know, obviously right. the vote has been done, and, you know, right. yes, the money, you know, we're, we're going to contract right. with right. rescue, but this, right. is, but, but this has right. not been a pleasant or easy process, and we feel there's still some mm -hmm. stuff that needs here. to be addressed. So they're they're aware, or Drew and Lou are aware of that, whether that got back to the board, I don't know. Um, but it, you know, I don't know, it's frustrating. Right. Um, but yeah, I think one of us should be there. The thing I know, it's the last day of school, and I gotta, that's, I'm not sure what's happening. Okay, all right, so well, well so we can just, just yeah. The other is, I mean, we, can, we, we could, can we warn that and attend? That meeting? Sure. I mean, can we warn it here, I mean, and then to a, a couple of us attend that that meeting? Yeah, I think as because long as it's an open meeting. Because, and people and know where it is, that they want to follow I mean, the as, yeah, as, as in effect, they, they sent representatives of their board here to speak to yeah, us. Yeah, I'll find out about how The gin on doing that, or are we not stepping on any kind of. Uh, the, 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 yeah, I don't know whether they, I mean, technically, we're only supposed to have one representative there. I don't know whether well, they... Well, it's an open meeting. It is? Are you sure? That's, that's what they, they told us. That night. Yeah. They well, said it was I, an open meeting, now. but please let us know when you're coming. Right. <laughs> right. Is what we I said. think you should just double check. That. Okay. Let us clean the streets, go. And I don't know, I mean, do you <laughs> have any idea whether BCTV films those meetings? I don't think they ever have. Yeah. I was just trying to see on their website. Good one. That's right. We'll get the, the light of day in there. I think we can hire a There you go. <laughs> little plug there. <laughs> we'll take it off the bill. <laughs> we didn't hear it. <laughs> okay. So I will find out exactly the time. Make sure I have the date right. If two people go, how to warn, talk with them, make sure it's an open meeting. And I will call Lauren Bartlett in the meantime, too, just to see if he's... The other person who expressed an interest is Mark Bellows. Uh, yeah. I, you know, um, Mark obviously mm -hmm. has plenty of experience mm -hmm. in that world. Um, don't know. I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. Get the general feelings on the whole situation. Or... I don't know. I didn't have that conversation. He just, at the special meeting, he pulled me aside and said, hey, you know, if you guys, if, if you're still looking, I potentially would be interested. So. Are we, in fact, allowed two rep? Two rep I don't believe or so. Or is it just one? One per? Okay. Yeah. I, I couldn't recall. But, but if you ask rescue, we're pretty special, so I'm sure they might do some... Well, some they know where things. we are now. Yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, I don't okay. see any problem making, having them jump through a few of those. Um, I just wanted to update you on the sidewalk RFP, the design consultant, we did select RSG. They were 13,000 more than the other two. Um, I'm going to put together, John up at VTrans wants kind of a synopsis of why we, um, I sent a letter to um, both of the ones that did not get selected, it was two days, were two, what, four hours total? Of going, it was not an easy process. It was made very clear to RSG that they were not a slam dunk. <laughs> there were some questions in one of the proposals about the construction that the final wall design for the retaining wall be done by the contractor, which was a little strange to us. The cost proposal was not, didn't spreadsheet, didn't out what the total was, so there was a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, one of the contractors was very close to um, RSG's price. It was Holden. Uh, the other one was Dufresne Group. Um, so, I, it was. You know how hard it is for me to spend. No, but I think more, I think thirteen thousand more. But just the continuity and and their proposal yeah. was good. They both 
It's more a question of the other two actually being thirteen thousand dollars less. Yeah. Than uh, all do, was said and done. Uh, yeah. With the exactly. scoring, do frame. Uh, how would you say that? Their, their, um, their scoring with our MCD <coughs> was pretty close, you know, on the scoring mm -hmm. sheet. So. Um, well, and as I think you and I talked about, you know. As a result of this, I think we're making it clear to RSG that we're expecting a lot from them, and yeah. mm -hmm. that there should be significant value. Yeah, and course. part of yeah. part of the consideration, which I really pushed, was my time. Yeah, is is valuable. It takes a lot of time to manage one of these, let alone two of these. Bringing the two design sure. projects Bringing to, to yeah, right. so the consideration yeah. of that time, Not I had to put in there too. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> so. They've been selected, they've been told we're going to have a, a, a meeting on the 19th um, with Dirk. He's coming to do a kickoff meeting and kind of just regroup where we are. So, Yeah, interestingly, I just, this still blows me away. Each one of them had some pretty significant errors. Yeah. Being blatant stuff. Yeah. In a proposal, just kind of blew me away. I never yeah. would expect to see it was really those types of errors. I, I mean, I could see a little bleep here and there, but these yeah. were. I wonder why that is. I, I, I wonder whether that's because it's just bidding season, you know, and they're just trying to get these things out the door. I mean, you would still hope yeah. those wouldn't well, be there, when you but... Well, get a cost oh, proposal and the spreadsheet right 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 to add up to what yeah. their proposal bid is. Hope, yeah, you would hope. <laughs> and yes, they said to me, well, we'll stick with our number, but I was like... That was, but that was look at this? I mean, RSG <laughs> had one, too. They The, the yeah. actual discussion of what the project was, like, in their title, it was like Kimball Hill to the general store. I'm like, Dirk, it's the same corner. Where did you even come? <laughs> it was a little frustrating. They were all a little frustrating. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, anyways. Kimball Hill to the general store for only X for amount of money. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um, right across the swamp. <laughs> and I have, I, I this. I have to bring this up because I've had at least four people come in in the last month and a half asking me about junkyards in town and mm -hmm. people's junk and tire piles. And so I had Laura dig through the minutes of when the last discussion was about this. I guess the board briefly Must reviewed a sample ago. ordinance in 2010. There was a discussion, the board will review the ordinance early and bring thoughts back to next meeting, and then it was not discussed again. Well, we had, remember what the man's treasure. <laughs> well, I wasn't what, what the, what no, the driver for that was, was the Richard Stockwell situation. Right. Yes. Which, uh, junkyard. Which was being exacerbated by, you know, illegal living situations. And well, let me just. The trailers the, there where people were living. The people that have yeah. come in. In the last like month and a half, it's been about the tire pile on route, old Route Five. Yeah. It's been about um, this house up here on Route Five. I don't know the guy's name, oh. but it's and that, but it, now the junk is kind of across the road a little bit. Um, right before, yes, right cars. before the summit. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah, that's, that's Steve. Steve, the, our audio man at Steve Borges. Okay. Well, that that can I'm telling you, that's looked like that. Uh, yeah, but you did, uh, did you hear the second uh, part of it? Since it's 1970, it's <laughs> Right, and I agree. In fact, it's rather overgrown now. You can hardly see a lot of No, but stuff. it's not that they're complaining. It's the, now it's crossed the road. Up on the hill, if you look, there's I a see. bunch of stuff up there. Well, and then... And he owns that also? That's, or? yeah. Oh. And, hmm. um... And just so, so you know, if you don't already know this, technically you're not allowed to have more than seven non-functioning vehicles on your property oh, if, if you're not licensed as a per person. Per okay. Per oh, I see. Right. Yeah. Well, I think per person. Is that a zoning per, or a statute? You know, I think that's. I think it's statutory. Oh, okay. Is that per person or per no, per okay, household? Per household, I right. think. Okay. Yeah. That's always been my understanding. Yeah. I There's a lot of ideas. So, and yeah. then the listers got a letter from someone today that they're actually grieving their property based on the fact that they're having trouble with resale because of some, this is also about yeah. Highmix Road. Highmix. So, it's, yep. so it's different areas, it's yeah. not one place, and I don't, I've kind of just 
I guess, taken the stance that we have nothing and I, I'm not sure what I can do. Well, then. there is statutory stuff we can lean on. So, uh, you know, okay. as far as vehicles are concerned. Well, we did, I mean, the, the other one that came up with the, with where it went on and on was Larry Bramhall, his mm -hmm. neighbor, remember mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. The collapsing the, the trailer, trailer. Yep, the trailer. an old Falling camper trailer, trailer type mm -hmm. of thing that was collapsing, and we did get involved in that okay. and cleaned it up some because... I can't remember whether we had back taxes or... Let me ask you something. I, you know, in a riding the roads in the spring looking at conditions and whatnot. I took a long tour out of Pinebacks Road mm -hmm. and coming through Westminster and there were several large collections along that right stretch. Right, from one end to the other. Yeah. But it looked like a certain amount of it had been cleaned up. Is there had there, had there been action taken by the I town? Mean, or there or has been action that? over the last 20 years that I know of, of different areas of town. Well, I mean, for one thing, but they have an ordinance. Right. For one thing, you know, junk, junk prices took a big jump. Yeah. And there was a, a period big of time. Big and they're still yeah. not low. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that it was really, you know, becoming viable to yeah. get rid of those. I believe there was one I know specific in Pine house. Banks and Putney, there's, there's a, there's a yeah. Stockwell collection of Oldsmobiles. <laughs> Literally, of yeah. one, you know, and there's like a lot of them. Yeah. Over behind this little low white building, it's a house across the end. You go past Connie, where Connie Stockwell lived, Steve Fish, and then oh, yeah. over there on the end, there's yeah. Right yeah. There. And then if you look in the, in the fall or in the winter, there is a huge herd of. Yeah, it goes all the way out into right. the. So I wonder if that's the question. Uh, I'm sure it's that. I'm sure there's a collection of them. This is at McMack Trail. So there's, that's mm -hmm. right in that yeah, right. Yeah, neighborhood. So, um, projects. yeah, I just, I guess I'm bringing it up to tell you that it's, being brought away. <laughs> We're really stepping into the heart of yeah. civil liberties and stuff here. Yeah. Well, you know, when it comes I know. to vehicles, it's, it's causing a health issue. Uh, yeah. It's causing a pollution you know, issue. I think it's worth looking at. I oh, mean, yeah. especially if there's statutory stuff to back it up. If it's us just deciding. Also, I think in this, in some of these situations, they were someone else's in the family's collection. Right. They passed. Somebody on. inherited it. And right. What do you they do? Just have, don't have the will or well, the, the means. Get a pressure in. Right. Well, I mean, well, it's, you know, that's not as easy. You know, I, like, no, I totally. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. I, and, and, but so I guess right. what I'm hearing right now is I need to kind of follow up with state statute to see, see what's already there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. My, I, I think what we discovered is that really only relates to vehicles, but even and even on that level. What about tires? I think yeah. it's a question of right tires. I called the agency of right. natural resource about the Route 5 mm -hmm. um, tire pile, and they will not get involved at all unless it's a pollution problem that's going into the right. streams, and they said most of the time tires aren't. Tires aren't. aren't. That's aren't. the thing. They're relatively inert. That's right. why vehicles, I think, are the enforceable one, because sure. you know they're sitting there, radiator hoses blow, right. you know, right. ATF is dripping out, so on and so on. And they want to it's equal to car. Yeah, I mean. Okay, so I'll start there, and then we'll decide from there whether we think that this is something that we need to, if we need to start looking into an ordinance that helps with even further than Coming for your cars, and then before you know it, they're coming for whatever else is under the blue tarps. Yeah. Well, that's that's exactly the discussion we were having last time. Because when it comes to cleaning up, or they mandate that you know, come after it, but no, there's no plan. Yeah, I remember the biggest one that I remember in Westminster was out on uh, Morrisburg Road. Yes, yes. It was yep. by the Westminster. That was, but it was kind of fenced the in there. And that eventually was cleaned up completely. Somebody yeah. lives there now. They have a trailer there, and it looks nice now, but. That was a huge. That was a huge involvement with the town. Yeah. Okay. Oh boy. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Are we all done? Yeah. We are. Yeah. We signed the warrants. They're in the box. Yep. Got drawings there. Guess we're a little late for your concert. Huh?
hot tidbit. Yeah, just about have anything else. Just about <laughs> in tune. Just about in tune by now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to get there right where the fourth grade is. Right. Oh my. Yeah. You can't reach there. Yes. Yes. Yeah,